folks, Ariel over here at Finest, where today I'm going to do a quick how-to on mending. So growing up I sewed all of my own clothes, um, everybody in the area did, and so I do know how to sew. I don't actually enjoy sewing, in fact it's probably my least favorite of all housework things, so I don't do most of it, which is why most of my clothes come from thrift stores. But Clay has a tendency, because he's a really hard worker who does lots of wonderful things for us, to wear through his pants, like many people do, right at the knee. You can probably see that gap there. So there is a pretty easy way to patch this, so I'm going to do so um, and show you guys how. Got I did one the other night and I've got two more pairs here. I'm sipping tea and it's cold outside. So one of the things I'm going to use to make this quite simple, there's more than one way to do this like most things, is an iron-on patch. Um, I've got this whole pack of different sizes and neutral colors, which is what most of both of our clothes come in. That is actually gray, but that's not quite as big as I want it to be. So we might be going with one that's black or blue instead of gray, which will be just fine. These are pants used for work. Ah, there's a nice strip of black. That'll do both pants. Anyhow, if you want, you're probably your local, if you have like Joann's or any kind of fabric or craft stores, you can probably buy a pack of iron-on patches like that. I don't live very close to any of those, so I actually ordered them off of Amazon. But I've been using them out of there for a while. So, you need the patch to be larger than your rip. So this rip, you know, goes kind of from there to there. It's about the same on both pants. And I want this to come out above and on all the sides because not only where the fabric is torn is there an actual hole, but it's pretty frayed and worn all around that. So to be able to stitch it and have it hold, I don't want to stitch into just the real weak portion and then have it promptly tear out again. Now these pants will be completely worn out and junk before too long because they're wearing through in many other spots as well. So... This doesn't have to be real precise. I'm going to say that's the right size for there, and that'll almost do that one. Anyhow, um, it helps a little to not have these tend to rub off while wearing or in the wash instead of having square corners like that if you round the corners just slightly. So I just do that. Nothing super precise. Just round them off just a little so that now my patch looks like that. And there's kind of a glue. It's not sticky until it's warm, which is what this iron is for. No, I still don't own an iron. I had to borrow one because I never own clothing that needs iron. But this is the easiest way to do this. So you want this patch to go on the inside. These pants are currently right side out. And so I'm going to turn that leg inside out. And there's enough pockets and such on this to make it a little bit lumpy. So you have to do a little bit of arranging to get it smoothed out. And then I want that patch to, again, fully cover. Um, I'm going to try to stay clear of that seam. Get it under there. Fully cover the whole really worn area. And so now I need to plug my iron in. Um, I could get an old-fashioned one that turned up pretty good. That uh, I could use on the stove, um, but I haven't ever done that. Sometime I'm in an antique store, thrift store, or something, and see one. I probably will get one, just for the few times I want to use it like this. But I don't have that today. So as soon as that iron gets hot, we're going to iron this on here, and then we're going to stitch it to reinforce as well. But this is just kind of helping um, strengthen all of that worn fabric all around the actual tear. The iron feels pretty close to hot. It is very cold outside. It hasn't been above freezing for a few days. We were outside for most of the morning. Got to break ice out of everybody's water buckets and everything. Get them drinkable water. Anyway, when you put this on, unless you want a giant mess on your iron, one side feels kind of like fabric, and one side feels like a dried glue. It's, it's a little more smooth, 
Um, but make sure you do not stick the glue side to your iron or it will be glued on. So that glue side goes down. Again, and we're inside out on the pants here. And um, I don't have an actual ironing board, but since this is really quick, I'm just going to put that on there and count to like 15. That seems pretty good and stuck down, but I'm going to do it a little more, maybe even give it one puff of steam to really help melt and set that glue. And I'm just doing this on the table, my regular table here with the uh, a towel for heat protection. And that should be plenty. Um, you can kind of pick those edges and feel that they feel um, all glued down. That's a little hot. Um, so we're just going to let that cool off there for a second. And actually put this iron out of the way so I don't burn myself. That cools quite quickly. So now, if we look at this from the right side out, now you can still see the, um, the tear there, but it's all reinforced. I can't any longer pull it apart the way it was gapping before. Now you could just go with that if you wanted. That would probably hold for a while, but because I know he's gonna be climbing and kneeling and all kinds of things in the process of work, I want to make that a little bit stronger. So here's how we're gonna do that. And if you do lots of sewing, like my mother or several of my sisters, you probably have a nice wide assortment of different colors and I could get the uh, threads and such and I could get the exact right, um, let's see, what needle do I want? I do not need a very small one. This is not a delicate operation. Um, you probably have a wide assortment of colors and could get a dark gray that exactly matched these pants. I do not do a lot of sewing because as I mentioned, I don't enjoy it. And so I tend to keep a few colors around that generally go with most of the clothing I wear, which is mostly dark and neutral colors. So I tend to have things like black thread, which will be just fine for a pair of work pants. But if you did want to do a patch that looked a little nice in this, getting a, a thread shade that actually matched the color of the uh, whatever fabric you were stitching through would be nice. You're going to see a you know, a little black zigzag on the outside with this. So if you've never sewed at all, what I did there is take the thread, loop it through the needle and pull it back and tie it in a knot. So now this is a double strand of thread. And to turn this around and put one hand inside here, both so that I can feel where that is and so that I don't accidentally stitch through and sew the pant leg shut, because I've done that before. Um, and first I want to just get this started and anchored. So I'm going to go over here to the edge of the patch and I'm just going to grab a teensy teensy little loop of material, pull this almost the whole way through. And because this is a loop, I can thread my needle through there and pull it tight. Now my, my whole strand of thread is firmly anchored to my pants. Now, because I actually want to see what I'm doing, I'm going to go back to right side out here. And I'm going to just kind of, if you have a sewing machine, this is immensely faster. I don't have one. Someday I will. That's backwards from the way my hand wants to work. So I'm going to just push the thread up through here and I'm basically going to do kind of a zigzag stitch, which if I had a sewing machine, that's what I would do. I would just zigzag back and forth several times till I kind of caught all the ends of that loose thread and, and then I'd call it quits. So I'm just basically going to do that same kind of thing by hand. Again, you do want to keep a hand under here in general because otherwise you'll end up going the whole way through to the bottom of the pants and sewing the leg shut, which is very frustrating when you realize you've done that and have to undo it. Um, but I'm not doing, you know, again, any kind of fancy repair. So I'm just, it's a little bit stiff with the fresh glue on there. Don't want your thread to get in the knot as you pull it through, pull it through clean. And, and again, um, this is kind of hard to show, but as I'm sewing here, 
I want to keep it flattened out, not puckered up, because that would make the, the pants feel kind of weird when you put them on, which we're going to try to avoid. So I'm just pulling it kind of snug, but flat. I'm doing by hand, I find it easier. There's lots and lots of fancy stitches you can learn if you want to actually get good at sewing. I'm just kind of doing a, a cross stitch here to hold down all those threads. And this is going to really anchor the, um, you know, the ironed on patch very solidly on. Now, even if one of those edges does come loose, which cut the, you know, rounded the corners to try to help prevent, um, it's not going to just fall off and leave a hole here in the middle again. But it's also making those edges nice and firm so I can, can stitch snugly to them. And if you did this without a patch like that, you would notice that how weak the material is right around your tear, and that would make it a little harder to have this hold together nicely. So... This is just going to take a minute and yeah, I find it worthwhile to patch some things like these. Good work pants are not exactly cheap and they're just going to get, you know, heavily worn again. And so being able to make them last for a few more wears is always, you know, helpful. So this is a good project for a very cold gloomy day outside. So that's what I am doing. And you can do this however you want, but if I go just past my current stitching and go straight through both sides, that makes an X in the front. And then if I come back down and go straight through both sides, it makes an X going that way. And then I can go up a little further and go straight through. I don't know what this stitch is called. Um, this video might horrify my mother because she is very neat and tidy and precise with her sewing and an excellent seamstress, and she would make this patch look very beautiful. But she did teach me enough about how to do sewing that I know how to make patches work, even if they are not as beautiful as hers. You can see how this is kind of a, a thicker, you know, pant material and um, it's now twice as thick with that iron-on patch glued onto the back. But see again what I mean, if I just pulled that snug, the, the pant would not lay flat. So as I'm going, I want to keep, you know, pulling it out this way so it's actually laying flat and not puckered up like this, which would make it uncomfortable to wear, or less comfortable to wear. When my needle cooperates, just a little bit into the, you know, kind of not torn fabric on each side of the patch. Now, if you don't have iron-on patches, you can do a very similar reinforcement thing with um, plain old, you know, scrap of fabric from a rag, or if you have a, you know, previous pair of pants or something like that that are, you know, completely shot, you could cut a scrap out of that. And with, you know, without the convenience of being able to do the iron-on, you could simply stitch that onto the back and uh, have it, you know, hold your, um, you know, zigzag stitching on the front here like I am doing. It is a little bit more handy to have it glue itself there, especially when you have a tear that's as you know, big and wide as this. That does simplify things a bit, but it is very possible to mend something just like this without that. Obviously, women were doing that for many years before anybody invented an iron-on patch. Okay, so I'm pretty well to the end of that. Now you can see what my patch looks like, and again, if I used a dark gray fabric, it would not stand out so much as the black does but that's the way this is gonna be. So I'm gonna tie this off again. I'm simply gonna push my needle back through to the inside, go inside out here, and do my same procedure to tie off. Grab my little pinch of a few threads of fabric there to anchor it to, knot it through the loop, 
do that a second time right beside it. Pulling to a loop there, you can see. Pulling the thread back through, making sure that's nice and snug. And then tucking, tucking the tail back through. And you can kind of feel, once you've done this a few times, if you're getting the needle between the layers of fabric. And if you want to check, you can look on the outside. I can't see the needle out there, so I know I've got it between the layers of fabric, because for there, I can't that stretch, I can't see the needle on the inside or outside. Pull it back through there to tuck my tail in. And clip that off. So there is one pair of pants fully fixed up to do some more work for a while. You can see the patch and um, I'm just going to duplicate the exact same thing on that one. Um, you can do that same kind of thing on, on any, you know, tear in, in a piece of clothing. It wouldn't have to be a pair of pants. Uh, I don't tend to wear through the knees on my skirts and such, so most often that does happen on a pair of pants, but that makes this pair serviceable for a little more work. If you ever want to keep some of your clothes going, that uh, maybe is a helpful tip. And if you actually want to learn about go good sewing, go find one of them. I'm sure there are many, many uh, seamstress type channels or blogs or whatever of people who are much more precise than me. I'm all about making it work and uh, having the fine details Obviously, to me, doesn't matter for this project. If you were trying to patch a, you know, fancy gown, you would take a little care and do something a little different than a pair of work pants. But that's a very serviceable patch that's going to make these work again for a while. Uh, one of the quotes I grew up hearing was, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. This is part of the using up and wearing out um, part of that. Unfortunately, we are in a position where once things are thoroughly worn out, we don't always have to do without. Sometimes we can buy new ones, but spending as little as possible on that is always nice because it leaves more available for doing other things. So that's how I patched a pair of pants. Well, over here at Fineth, thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.